today I'm going to experiment with Michael Harding's quinacridone gold. It looks quite brown on the tube end, but once I put it on the palette it's looking a bit more yellowish. I'd like to compare it with two other tubes that look quite similar, um, transparent oxide red and a burnt sienna. I thought both of those looked quite similar on the tube. So let's just look at that to begin with. So this is quinacridone gold. Gosh, look, powerful colour. Quite reddish, pinkish. Well, quinacridone, I suppose it's a bit like a quinacridone pink in there, but much more yellowy. But it's got that pink note to it. Quite smooth, small particles, I guess, so it feels nice and loose and buttery to work with. Compare it with burnt sienna. Gosh, there's a massive difference. That feels much stiffer, you may be able to hear. A bit more gritty. Um, much redder, much browner, flatter. Very different from Burnt Sienna. And the Transoxide Red, this is another transparent, so this is feeling more similar in terms of consistency, but the colour is way different. That's much more of a rust red colour. So the gold really is far more golden yellow than either of these others. It seems to have more in common with Indian yellow red shade actually now that it's out of the tube, though I don't think it's like that either. So now let's try mixing it with some other things. To begin with I'm going to put it with a little bit of zinc white. Because it's transparent I don't want to knock it around too much with the titanium, so a zinc white will be more gentle and allow it to retain some luminosity I hope. And that's mixing really nicely to a, a warm ginger sort of colour but with more of a yellow note actually. Very nice. I'll cover up the burnt sienna so we don't get confused. How about with some quinacridone rose? So the same family, see what happens. So there's the rose, a very reddish hot pink. And with the gold, wow, liquid fire. <laughs> That's fabulous. That looks really gorgeous. Perfect for flowers or berries, a real hot colour. I wonder where it will go if I put it with some King's Blue Deep. Quite a different colour. So the King's Blue Deep has a little white in it, so we're raising the value here, it's going quite opaque as well. But that's making quite a lovely green. That's a really natural green it's made. Could use that quite happily for foliage without having to add red. I'm always softening my greens with reds and that might save me a job there. That's lovely. With a more vivid green, permanent green light. I've got no idea what's going to happen now. <laughs> I'm wondering if it will make something more brown. Possibly. Another nice foliage green, I would say. This is less opaque. It has a lot more um, vibrance. The, with the King's Blue, it's really quite a flat, opaque covering colour. It's much more transparent with the permanent green light. Um, but a gorgeous green. Really summery leaf green. And just for fun, I want to try it with a little bit of deep purple. I probably will need a bit more quinacridone because this deep purple is like rocket fuel. So let's give it a fair shot. Good bit of quinacridone gold there and a tiny bit of the purple. Oh, that's very nice. Very rich purple brown coming through. Using a bit more of the quinacridone. That's lovely. Very rich, velvety brown. I hope you can see that, it's quite dark. Let's add a tiny bit of white just to see what temperature the brown is. It's going more hazel now. This is really lovely colour, quite versatile. Goes everything from very loud to really quite soft. As soon as I'm adding white, it's softening it right down. But in the transparent forms, it's really quite vivid. An interesting one. Thank you. 